the Plotcast Podcast with the Potty Plotters. Hello and welcome back to the Potty Plotters Plotcast Podcast. This is Season 2, Episode 20. I'm Julia. And I'm Elaine. Okay. Okay. Hello. Welcome, everybody. (laughs) This is the podcast. And in this episode, we're going to talk about sewing more to make the most of the weather. Again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're also caring for our tomatoes and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And, uh, well, let's get on with it. Go on, then. It's still freezing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's not. Well, the problem is it's still getting quite cold at night as well. I'm not happy about that. But uh, we you need to. You think we consist- should blame it on the weatherman we had on in the last episode? Yes, mm. let's blame everything on him. Have you got his address so we can write to him? <laughs> <laughs> write to him? I was thinking of a visit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the time you write to him, it'll probably have picked up in the weather with the, how yeah. the postal system is now. Yeah, so but having oh, yeah. said a visit is more in, A visit is more instantaneous. Having and- said that, Elaine did threaten him last time, so <laughs> I don't think we'll be visiting him, Gareth, because we've already got enough um, injunctions. Restraining, restraining, orders. restraining orders and injunctions out against I mean, it's a visit. Yeah. I mean, you could just pop up and it's not I mean if, you, if you're not invited is it a visit hmm. who well, knows technical question uh, yeah anyway. intrusion yeah intrusion I like that one he won't <laughs> <laughs> anyway so a reminder if you have got any questions people can get in touch with us yeah how do they do that Gareth you can get in touch with us on social media on Facebook, Instagram and X at Potty Plotters. You can follow us on TikTok at The Potty Plotters. And since we're still in an election period, we do need to calm it down a little bit because uh, electioneering and all that sort of stuff. But your party election broadcast for the Common Sense Party yeah. will be on TikTok. Yeah. You can, oh. you, can email, you can email us, naughtycorner at pottyplotters.uk or check out the website, pottyplotters.uk. And uh, if you'd like to support us to keep going with the plot cast and there's 20-something more episodes left of this season, then you can. You can leave us a tip at ko-fi.com slash thepottyplotters. That's ko-fi.com slash thepottyplotters. And if you do that, we'll love you forever and give you a big shout out. And if you're really lucky, a big hug on the podcast. We like a tip, don't we, Elaine? Because when we go out don't and do eat talks, no. <laughs> <That's laughs> well, when we go out to talks, people give us kind of really useful tips, don't they? As well. So, can you remember when we went to talk to uh, the group who, what were they called, the tre- trefoil? Oh, well, yeah, trefoil ladies. Mm. They're, they're people who are in the guide movement yeah um one of the ladies when we were talking about what we do with our tights she said when she goes camping if you put your um bar of soap in your tights then it won't go soggy you've not got a soggy bar of of soap so there's a tip we like a tip so if people want to give us other tips i mean gardening tips would be nice (laughs) (laughs) hygiene tips we're not that interested (laughs) in but gardening tips that's quite useful because you might need them on the allotment it, it's a useful way of storing your soap if you've got running water on your plot or yeah. anything so yeah mm. give us your tips the Plotcast podcast with the potty plotters talking of tips <laughs> <laughs> talking PG. of tips um broad bean tips uh, broad bean tips. <laughs> I know you've not got it listed, but yeah. I have noticed that there's quite a bit of black fly yeah. on the broad beans on some people's plots. And what do they need to do with the tips, Elaine? Take the tips out. Now then, I always take more than I need to, but that gets rid of black fly before it even starts, actually. So I take mine out down to, a well, I take about three inches out the top. Yeah. Now... I know that you have not got black fly on yours, your crimson red, and they look absolutely yeah. stunning, Julia. They are massive. Yeah, but so they're if in you the took poly. five foot out, nobody would <laughs> even notice. Yeah, they are in the poly, but nevertheless, they are massive. Actually, Julia, saying that, they're not as big as Kev's. No. Now, he don't listen to this because it's all too technical for him, but Kev's must be, if I... I'm not exaggerating, and I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take a photograph of me standing in amongst his beans because I reckon they are seven foot high. Yeah, but they're not as impressive as mine <laughs> because... <laughs> Because, let me just get my defence in. Oh, First of all, on. he grows a variety that grows tall anyway, naturally outside. Mine shouldn't even be getting more than about four foot. So the fact that mine are touching the ceiling on my polytunnel shows A, how impressive it is, and B, my flowers are more beautiful on mine. Because they're crimson flowers. Can't argue with that, but we're not going to eat the anyway, flowers, are we? we so I think 
what we'll do is we'll take some photos in a while, Gareth. You know, yeah, we will. You know how you're talking about flies? Yeah. I'm just looking at the microphone windshield, as we call it in the business. Windshield? Now, there's yeah. a bit of green on it, and I can't oh. work out whether it's a bit of fluff. No. Or a bit of green Shall fly. I just tap? No, no, it's not there. No, it's not there. It's there. Oh. It's a green fly. Oh. You can have that, Gareth. That's <laughs> Thanks. free. <laughs> Thanks for that one. <laughs> I don't want it. But yeah. I can't even get rid of it now. Oh dear. Anyway, oh, well, Elaine, last week we were talking. I know I'm going off script completely here. We have got on. a script, <laughs> Julia. Can we have a quick production meeting? If yeah. she's going off script so much, we're going to have to move stuff into the next episode. No, All oh, right, OK. Well, look, the only reason I wanted to go a little bit off script is, A, Wimbledon's come in, and we have been talking about the weather, and I've bought you something that I think has actually enjoyed all the wet weather. I've got a pair of them in front of me, Julia. Yeah. And strawberries. They yeah. look really nice. They do. They, they look so much. Because it's amazing, because having looked at what the weather's been like, I was expecting the uh, British crops to be not as good. And the ones in the supermarkets that we've had for quite a while haven't been as good. I tend to sort of judge the strawberries by how good they are at this time of the year yeah. with Wimbledon and then therefore how expensive they are when you go to Wimbledon but when have you I go mentioned back, I've been to Wimbledon yes yeah. you have yes 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 but if you go backwards to we keep talking about backwards. the weather yeah. well let's talk let's about the weather week. shall we yeah, yeah. yeah. and um, strawberries love a damp condition they like the moisture because of course the more moisture they get at this stage when they're growing mm. which is we've had a lot of rain it makes the fruit swell now some people i know have, have sent pictures of strawberries that look a bit deformed and that's a pollination issue if they're kind of all a bit lumpy and bumpy it's because the the pollination but look at the size of them they're massive and i think they've really enjoyed these wet conditions and the smell of them mm is scrumptious isn't it Gary it is you can't tell did obviously. I no, you I Gary then that's no, quite nice no, no, really no. Gareth no. But, yeah but they do smell scrumptious they do. don't they yeah. they do you can have them you, you haven't washed it but you can no. <laughs> no, sorry has washed it. it it's been <laughs> Yeah, well, it's I've been, been raining for the last six months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it should be okay. Yeah. But look, absolutely scrummy. So not every... Are we eating one then, Gareth, me and you? Yeah, go on then. On then. You got on, Julia. Do you no, want a bit no. of mine? It's all right, I'm saving the rest to go with I'll ice cream later. The... Ooh, Is the ice cream man coming? Have we invited no, him? No, no. Oh, that'd be good. Mmm. Oh. They're nice. Mm. They taste of strawberry. I'd oh, hope blimey, so. Yeah. I would hope I'd they don't taste of runner bee. No. It's mm. a strawberry, don't it? Mm. They're lovely, aren't they? Well done, Julia. Yeah, and it's not just the strawberries that have enjoyed it. I've noticed that a lot of the fruit, apart from raspberries on site, which mm. don't like sitting in the, the water, but a lot of the fruit is looking really healthy and it yeah. obviously likes the wet conditions. The blueberries are loaded, the black currants are loaded. You know, the apples and, the and pears are quite are noticed, happy yeah. as well. So not everything dislikes the, uh, the wet weather. No. But let's go back to what I wanted to talk about, which is beans, Julia. <laughs> oh, right. Why do you want to talk about beans? <clears throat> because I wondered if people might think that they're too late at this time of year to plant beans. And the answer is no. So at the side of me here, I'll just get these here. Oh. No sound effect, Gareth. It's like Blue Peter then, wasn't well, it? Some yeah, because here's some that I did grow yeah. earlier. And uh, I grew earlier. these. Um, these were at the end of April. So oh, about so six, not long ago. six weeks. Yeah. Oh. And the good thing is, Gareth, these are ready now to be planted out. Now then, all I would say is that now is the time of the gap. Now, we talked about it last week, but yes. I'm now going to mention it again. Yeah. I'll put those to one side at the moment. But these beans are ready to be planted. So okay. once these go out, I'm then going to put more beans and set them into the containers. OK, OK. Right. Is that because the beans will exhaust themselves of beans? The beans will exhaust themselves of beans. Julia, have you been drinking? It's only a question. No, the bean plants, are, are we growing more because they won't just carry on producing more and more and more then? Do they get to no. a point where they slow down or stop producing yeah. plants? Yeah, right. and dwarf, these dwarf varieties, realistically, once they've actually grown the beans, I'll take them out and then okay. just plant them again. So it makes sense to do that, even though you were talk, talking gobbledygook. <laughs> I mean, why didn't we ever learn Latin instead? 
what other beans do you want to plant at this time of year? What about some runner beans? You can plant some more runner beans. You can plant some bellotti beans. You can you can plant any beans. You know, you'll get a later crop and actually it comes at the right time. So it's perfect. I think that they come better later yeah. because they don't get so many problems with black fly, white fly, the birds, etc. Yeah. So I actually prefer to plant my beans a lot later so have a go yeah and don't forget it's a big seed so what do we do with the seeds gareth we put them on their side wow. because so we don't want to uh, destroy them with the water well done yeah and also elaine when we're planting out what what's the advice that you would give people about um about what <laughs> what is it julia you know when are you're you doing right? podcasts are you two generally? all right today? <laughs> Generally, generally, it's generally, about talking it, into right, it. <laughs> it's a concerned question. Are you two okay? <laughs> so, when you tell people to plant out beans or peas, yes. what do you always tell them to do with their faces and their feet? <laughs> Keep your face on your head. <laughs> That's what I normally say. So, the truth is that I always try to keep the feet so the roots shaded and cool and the tops of the plants towards the sun because that's what they actually like so the feet in the shade and the faces in the sun is that what you meant that's love? what i meant now how can they do that how can they keep the, the feet in the shade though a good question what i would do is i would plant beetroot or potatoes or something like that in front of or wherever it is that can offer shade to the bottom of the plants yeah. that's what i like to okay. do and actually you can plant things like courgettes as well they'll do it so just have a think about where you're going to plant them okie dokie are you going for a lie down <laughs> i think i need one don't i <laughs> contact the potty plotters anytime on facebook twitter and instagram at potty plotters or email naughty corner at potty plotters.uk Right, succession planting. These phrases we use all the time. I know we've talked about it before, but I just want to tell people that it's not too late to plant. And here's some that I've got. Got grot. Grot. What okay. are they? I've got some carrots here, and these are Chantonnay red cord right so they're orange on the outside red in the middle oh, and the cool. reason that i've got these is because these are later so these aren't going to be harvested until later but i thought we'd try these I like that noise that's a noise effect sound effect <laughs> yes yeah. so i thought we'd have a go at these actually yeah. gareth for okay. a change so they're a small variety can, can, could i plant those you know what my garden's like yeah. and we're trying to cover bits of it over and it's not yeah. very the bits that are still there aren't great but could i do those in a a pot about that big what we're saying yeah. just over about a foot, two foot. Yeah. yeah mix That's some so sand in with it though yeah. yeah and these grow better all carrots grow better in a sandy environment so the more sand that you can get in the better sand is not grit g-r-i-t sand is really important because it gives a better drainage but the other thing is when you pull your carrots out they're actually clean yeah mm -hmm. Succession planting, going back to that, mm. so it's not just carrots that you no. do with that method, it's things like uh, lettuce, beetroot, yep. uh, what else would you do? I'm definitely doing more beans, I know we've talked about them before, but um, I am doing those. I mean, you could be thinking <coughs> about more cabbages, you can yeah. think about more cauliflowers. Are you doing any cauliflowers? Oh, I've got loads of cauliflowers, you know I love cauliflowers, so for every part of the season, and it's really important that you get the right variety for the right part of the season, mm. but it means that I I'll have a continuous supply yeah. of cauliflower so when we talk uh, succession planting we're talking about planting something that basically you're going to pull out the ground and there'll be Put a gap there yeah so you're looking at planting something else and and we have got a huge variety of seeds that you can choose that will cover all those gaps if yeah. you want something Including cabbages peas yeah as well. peas so yeah. There's, there's very little that doesn't need to be filled you just yeah. carry on growing yeah. don't you yeah. and i think that's the problem that sometimes people sit back and think oh well that's it but it isn't it's one Crack of, on yeah. with it it's one of the hardest things to master i think mm. i think people do go mad at kind of april may and then it all dies down whereas actually if you think in ahead you can keep cropping well into probably november time let's do it if you'd like to support the podcast, you can leave us a tip at ko-fi.com slash thepottyplotters. That's ko-fi.com slash thepottyplotters. And we'll love you forever. 
Now, tomatoes and cucumbers yeah. and other greenhouse crops, peppers and, and chilies, aubergines, you can start feeding them now, can you, Elaine? Well, I haven't yet, oh. but I'm way behind you, don't oh, forget. Yeah. But um, my red robins are in flower, so very shortly I'm going to start and feed them. But I noticed that you're way ahead than I am I'm in my crops. Yeah, that's because I'm a better grower. <laughs> Turn this off, there could be a fight. <laughs> fight. Fight. Yes. fight. No, no, that's not true. I've just had more time to get down here and put them in the ground. And as soon as they're in the ground, they get going really quickly. So are you feeding yours? Yes, I am. So I always make a habit when I'm feeding my plants of doing it on a specific day of the week so I never forget. So I do it on a Sunday generally and it becomes a habit then Sunday feeding and follow the instructions on the uh, feed so the tomorite or whatever you're using of course you could make some of that stinky stuff that you Humphrey made but, yeah, yeah but gareth said we weren't allowed to do that this year because no. he's only just recovered from last yeah, year he was a bit it, whiffy, yeah, wasn't yeah. It? a okay. bit <laughs> i can still smell it <laughs> that's not it but of course that is free food isn't it if it you make is, your own yeah comfrey. yeah but i just think that you have to be careful with everything and make sure as you say you adhere to the rules but also make sure sure that you do keep things well watered rather yeah. than starving them yeah. that's not good is it yeah but they don't want to be kind of drowned do they they like a consistent water and it's more important to be consistent keep things moist rather than uh, drowning them saturated we don't want saturated crops that's all with you then hints and tips for shortcuts to success the potty plotters plotcast Okay, Elaine, you may have noticed on my plot, and I've noticed on your plot, that the flowers are really getting going now. So uh, how should we be cutting them? Right, deadheading is the first thing oh. I was going to mention, because dahlias don't just take the head off. Yes. Follow the stem down to the main stalk and take it off there. Right. That's really important, because then it will start other plant other um flowers to start and grow yeah if you just take the head off it doesn't know what to do so that's the first thing cosmos keep deadheading the cosmos i've got loads and loads of it now but you've just come to show off haven't you about your snapdragon yeah well i've bought some snap i bought a snapdragon spike that I'd, I'd cut off and i've got lots of different flowers that i'm doing for cutting so mm. whilst i'm going around deadheading some of the things that i'm just leaving in the ground things that i'm i'm cutting i'm taking the stem i'm taking the cut right back almost to the main stem yeah. of the uh, flower and i'm taking probably just one or two things that are in flower but then if they've got buds on they will open so things like the cosmos they will open in the water in the jar so that's quite nice to have something to coming up later on but with the uh, snapdragons and they are really really tall spikes now aren't they mm. that i'm taking them when they get to about a third of the main stem open and just leaving like two thirds unopened because they shouldn't open up a little bit when they're cut and i'm taking a good long stem of it so because then it will produce more longer stems and which if you are doing them for flower cut flowers you want a long stem so i'm sure tina will have something to say about it she'll have something to say anyway won't she oh yeah have you it. told her yet that we're growing them no oh, I see. no but i tell you what we'll ask her to come over yeah. and see if she'd like to have a few words on a podcast yeah mm. the plotcast podcast with the potty plotters I'm going to reiterate yet again, Julia, ho before you need to hoe. It's that time of year where the soil is drying out somewhat, but just get the hoe out, everybody, and just hoe. Hoe when you've got half an hour. That's all you need to do. Start at the beginning of the plot and work your way around the garden. It seems funny, really, to be talking about hoeing now because I always think, hi ho, hi ho, and I always think that's Christmas, isn't it? It's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Hi ho. <laughs> hi ho. Hi ho. Oh, right. No? Uh, you can't sing, we're going to have to pay for that. Okay. <laughs> right, take that out, take that bit out. But anyway. <laughs> oh, no, we'll leave it in. Let's, let Walt Disney come after us. <laughs> also, um, I know, again, it's not on the. Uh, the script list. on the list but i am going to quickly talk about apples and pears because in june you oh blimey apples and pears 
<laughs> you and your cockney <laughs> rhyming slang, madam. <laughs> I'm quite delighted this year to see that the apples and pears are quite abundant on the trees. But in June, you expect something to happen called the June drop. So that is... <laughs> Steady. <laughs> you look at me like I'm making this up and I'm really not. <laughs> but in June, the, the apples and pears should be thinning themselves out. So they grow like in a cluster and they should be thinning themselves out. So any that are no good, they should be dropping on the floor. But if they haven't done that by the end of this month, go round and thin out the clusters because it's better to have a couple of big apples than lots of small ones that aren't looking so healthy. So go and do that. Well, I don't need to because I haven't got very many this year. But I've got I some and I right can't reach them. Dropping. Oh. oh, what? What can't you reach? The top of my apple tree. Oh, OK. I'll have to get my steps out again. Mm, we'll go and have a look then. Top-notch advice. No Latin included. The Potty Plotters Plotcast. So what's the difference then, Julia, between a winter squash and a pumpkin? Or the pumpkin family? Uh, is, this a, is this some form of joke? No, I what don't is know. Quiz? What is the difference? <laughs> is it a quiz? No, well, sort of, yeah. Well, a pumpkins, a pumpkin, a pumpkins generally you have them for carving, whereas a squash, a winter squash, is something that you would store. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, that's the main thing because you get a harder skin on the squash because of the saving. Gareth wants you to go forward. Oh, bless you, dear. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, rather, a pumpkin doesn't save. You actually get it over that period of time and they don't like the cold and then they rot. No. So save them properly, yeah. Yeah. Okay, then. And, of course, you've got the colour variety. Yeah. So brilliant yeah. now, isn't it, for squashes? And also, think about when you're planting. So now is the time, if you've not already. I have been encouraging people on site to actually pot their squashes and their courgettes on because it has been such a bad year with all the slugs and everything yeah. so they've got a nice big healthy plant and if they've not if you've not done it already get them out get them planted but i have been saying you need to show the squash who's boss Right. <laughs> is this like a threat again? Is no, it like what she was yeah, talking about yeah, with the weatherman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so now Julia's taking over on so, threats. So a courgette will grow, and it generally will grow within about a metre square. Okay. And it will grow from the centre of the plant, and it will just keep producing from the centre of the plant. Whereas a squash, they will trail. They'll start trailing around your plot. And of course, that's brilliant. If you've got a really weedy area on the plot and you just want to smother the weeds, squash plants are brilliant. They'll just travel all over the place and they'll do... I think that. I think they're a good... Um weed suppressant and the other thing is though don't forget julia that wherever you plant your plant don't forget to stick a stick in oh, it oh yeah why is that well because you very quickly think oh yeah well i'll remember where i've planted it and before you know it the things generally if they are trailing variety yeah. they've taken over and you can't remember where the plant is so when you come to watering it or feeding it you can't remember where it was oh, it's also all weed yeah. that's a top tip so but you try can, that but you can if you wanted to tell it where to go really can't Ooh, you well yeah <laughs> Deeply, thank you very much yes so you can pick it up you can move it if it's trailing in a direction you don't want it to trail in move it you can peg it if you wanted to you can stop it uh, carrying on in a certain direction by pinching out the growing tip it'll put out more side shoots but again that's you showing it who's boss and don't be afraid to show it who's boss I'm never afraid. <laughs> no, I don't. No. I've gone past all of that, Julia. But I will say that, again, Kev, plot two, oh, right. last year when he grew his butternut squash, yeah. they were magnificent, They were magnificent, but they were enormous, weren't they? They were, yeah. yeah. But he saved them right the way through until he, he started did, again. He did, but he did say he was quite sick of it, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> he probably won't grow any this year, will he, because he was that sick of it well, last year. I understand that butternut squash had an adverse effect and he kept blaming the dog. <laughs> not fair is it <laughs> poor Rosie I oh, know yeah anyway so what I would say then is if you've got time grow some squashes I've got some sweet little dumplings Have you know I'll leave that thought with you <laughs> what about the squashes <laughs> <laughs> bum, bum. yeah so have a go it's not too late to start no, and no. they certainly don't take long to germinate the seeds get cracking and before you know it that's it the plot's full of them brilliant grow upwards if if in doubt you know Oh, OK. You know when people say, oh, grow up? Yeah. Is that what they mean, do you think? <laughs> I've never grown up. <laughs> In height or mentality. <laughs> <laughs> And next 
next time what we're going to talk about uh well as time gets nearer to the election obviously mm-hmm. we're going to uh, carry on on our election campaign for minister for allotments you know i don't understand why somebody hasn't come come forward and said that's a really good idea yeah. Nobody has yet, have they? Well, if anyone's got any influence, remember, please get in contact with us, Potty Plotters. You, we, we've given all the details out. I can't and you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> But please contact us and, you know, Elaine's quite happy to talk to any party, but uh, she is the common sense party. There ain't no party like an Elaine Crick party. (laughs) The Plotcast Podcast with the Potty Plotters is an Amberland Media production. 